Hello, so the theme of this presentation is growing bacteria in the lab. It's a fairly short presentation and one that I don't think you'll find too challenging, but still very important nonetheless. So before we can grow the bacteria, we need something in which they do develop. And the substance that we use is this jelly. It's liquid at this stage, but it will set into a solid jelly and it's known as agar. Now agar contains a lot of carbohydrate, sugar in particular, to give the bacteria the, the basic energy that they need to grow. And it also contains all sorts of vitamins and minerals as well. So agar is sometimes called a nutrient jelly because it's got the carbohydrates in, the sugars in, and it's also got the vitamins and minerals in to allow the bacteria to grow. Now it's poured into something called a Petri dish. And I'm sure you'll have seen these lying around the lab. So agar is the nutrient jelly on which the bacteria will grow when it's solid and the dish in which it's stored is a Petri dish. Now both the Petri dish and the agar will have been sterilised first. They'll have been heated up to a very high temperature or been exposed to ultraviolet light. Now that word sterilised simply means that they will have no bacteria growing on them from the word go. So right from the very start they will be sterile, no bacteria growing on them. Both the dish and the agar jelly will be completely free of bacteria and that's very important for what we're about to see next. Now what you're looking at here is called an inoculating loop. It's a, a loop of wire in a piece of wood that you hold. You hold the wooden part, the other bit goes in the flame and you hold the inoculating loop in the flame to kill any bacteria growing on it. In other words, to sterilise it. So for the next stage, stage B that we're going to move on to in a moment, we use a sterilised inoculating loop as it's called. When the loop has cooled down briefly, you dip it into the mixture of bacteria that you're going to sample. Or it might be that you wipe it on the desk or a door handle or wherever you want to take the bacteria from. The loop, the inoculating loop, and I don't think I've spelt that, I'll put it on the screen for you in just a second, is now dipped into the bacterial mix or wiped onto the surface that you want to check for bacteria. So there you go, that's how you spell inoculating and loop. So the loop is the little circle of wire that you can't see because it's behind the fellow's thumb there. And inoculating is just a kind of a posh word for injecting, if you like, that sort of thing. Step C next. So in step C, the inoculating loop that's now got the bacteria on the tip of it is zigzagged backwards and forwards across the agar jelly. And that will leave a streak all the way down to the bottom of the jelly. So it's starting at the top there and moving down towards the bottom. It's going to be streaked across like that. And then straight away, very swiftly, the lid is put back on the agar. So no um, foreign, if you like, bacteria can get into the agar. We only want bacteria from the loop to get in there. So very quickly, we put the lid back on. And remember that both the, the um, Petri dish and the agar were sterilised earlier, so any bacteria in there now should be the ones that we've placed in there. So next we put the lid on the agar and we're now going to put it somewhere and leave it for a few days for the bacteria to culture. Two important things to bear in mind though. And to the front, right down there, and this may be testing one, the testing three, plate three, three, five, seven, eight. nine. Firstly, you add adhesive tape, cello tape, around the actual rim of the dish. So you're going to partially seal it. Excuse me, you don't want to totally seal it because you still want oxygen to be able to get in. <coughs> oh, excuse me, sorry. You want oxygen to be able to get into the dish through the gaps there. But also you want to seal it a little bit to stop other bacteria from getting in. So add adhesive tape. Now you put it into an incubator and you store it at 25 degrees Celsius. It's like a mini oven, really, if you like, but it doesn't get that hot. And it's stored at 25 degrees Celsius because that is a temperature that's going to speed up the growth of the bacterium for us. It's going to give them a decent temperature to grow at. But we want to keep it away from 37 degrees Celsius because 37 degrees Celsius is body temperature. And if we stored it at 37, although the bacteria would grow more quickly, we would also be culturing, or we could be culturing, bacteria that could be dangerous and could infect the body. So we have to be very careful to make sure that the temperature doesn't get to 37. So we add adhesive tape and we incubate at 25 degrees Celsius in the lab. 
And here's the result. What you can see there are colonies of bacteria of all sorts of different colours. Uh, yellow ones, orange ones, you've got red ones too. So you've got bacteria of all sorts of different co uh, colours growing on there. And each one of these things is known as a colony. So each one will contain thousands, of tens of thousands, even hundreds of thousands of bacteria of one sort growing there. And we don't always see the streak that we put on there because some parts of it kind of don't develop bacteria. But it does give you an idea there of how many bacteria there are growing on it and, and how many different sorts of cultures. So that's it. I told you it wouldn't be very long, this presentation. That's it for now. Thank you for watching. I hope that you've learned something and I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.